From the moment the concept of the Hyperloop was first published in late 2013, the world has got extremely excited about the possibilities. You just think about what could be possible. The ability to go from Delhi to Mumbai in 80 minutes, the ability to live 300 kilometers from where you work and still be able to get there in less than 30 minutes, the ability for every journey to be point to point with no stopping in between, the ability for freight to move coast to coast the same day without the need for the freight stopping. This technology is not just a high-speed transportation innovation, it is actually a transformation innovation that will affect society, will affect business, but most importantly, will give incredible amounts of time back to citizens all around the world. Humans have always been moving, moving forward, moving forward to a brighter future. And for us, transportation and movement is a technology, but it's also a movement in and of itself. Hyperloop is transportation in an enclosed environment. Think of this as two-way tubes, one going this way and one going in the opposite direction. Those tubes can be above the ground on pylons and farms can be underneath of them, people can cross underneath, or they can be in tunnels. We have designed an electric propulsion motor, which is affixed inside the tube. Power is applied for only a portion of the tube's distance, and that electric motor is controlled by a piece of software and control that allows us to only use power when the pod moves over top of the motor. And there's a lot of energy used, but we turn it on and off in, in microseconds. Then we build a pod. What's a pod? It's a vehicle. It rides on magnetic levitation. We can put cargo in that pod. We can put passengers in that pod. And then we remove the pressure from inside that tube. So in a low pressure environment equivalent to 160,000 feet above the Earth's surface, we have a equivalent to an airplane with some spaceship-like characteristics, floating on magnets with very little resistance, using an electric motor to propel it. And as a result, we can go really fast, depending on route, up to 1,100 kilometers an hour. We can use very little energy and we can make some of the possible connections in a country like India go from hours, and in the case of freight, from weeks to days and minutes. And I think that's the transformation that's possible with Hyperloop. Every journey is point to point. We will go to the airport. We'll come to the city center. We'll come right up to an existing and major train station or connect to a major artery of a metro because this is just the high-speed backbone for existing transportation that exists today. You'll see routes that completely transform the times that it requires to move across major portions of this country. You'll see routes that connect smaller distances between cities, could open up job opportunities uh, for people to not have to move in this decade-long urbanization, but perhaps live 300 miles away from where they could work. And imagine the difference that would make on the definition of a city. We're here to say that we're building this thing. We have a 108,000 square foot factory perfecting the manufacture of the components of Hyperloop. You wanna make in India and do it here? We could take all the learnings that we have and transport the methodologies, the systems and components and programming and learn more in doing that by building a production system here. We have a test facility in North Las Vegas. We've purchased acres, 50 acres of land. Uh, we're developing a prototype. The first phase of that prototype will be operating shortly. Then we'll make it longer. Then we'll do banking. Then we'll do switching. We'll be testing and developing this technology for years. But our vision is to then do that on production routes along with a country that wants to host us. You might have seen this test earlier in the year. This was a component test of the propulsion system. You see those white coils that were on the bottom that propelled very quickly the sled down a rail track. We won't have rails inside the Hyperloop. But what we are building right now is the full-scale production, where that component, where the pods, where the track, where the tube, where the pumps are all demonstrated as a full-scale system. 
And this is what's going on in the desert today. This is over a half a kilometer of tube. This is our CTO. This is our president of engineering and co-founder, Josh Geigel, showing some engineering firms around the world how this big this is. You'll see the various scale up on pylons. There's the pumps that will reduce the pressure and bring it down to 100, 100 uh, pascals of pressure. So history was made in 1903 and we saw the last new mode of transportation was developed by these inventors and future thinkers in 1903. This is 2017. It's about time that another new mode of transportation was developed to help us keep up with the growth of the planet, with an on-demand economy, with the stresses we've put in terms of urban life, the definition of new digital cities, and that's exactly what we're doing at Hyperloop. So history will be made in the deserts of Nevada in the next few months. We will invite all of you to come and join us. But in the meantime, I think history is being made here today in India as we start a very important part of our collaboration. And my big dream, after having spent a lot of time seeing India thrive and drive the IT industry, would be, would be to see India thrive and drive the transportation revolution that's going on right now. And that is our offer. That's our objective. And uh, if we do uh, nothing uh, less than that, I'll be very disappointed. We'll be very happy to find out how you develop, how you go along. And I'm sure in India, you want to know how you'll succeed. There are enough number of people who can guide you looking at your horoscope. <laughs> Where are you going to go? So investors will look at your balance sheet and your projections, but these people will not look at any of those but can tell you exactly where you are going to go. But if you ask me, I'm not neither an astrologer nor an investor. So how do I judge your future? I think I was just looking at it, your world headquarters was in a garage. Google started from a garage. Facebook virtually almost from there. So if you can go by that, you have chosen a garage to start your world headquarters then I'm sure you'll go the way they have gone. So I really wish you all the best, offer you my best wishes and all the successes. And we'll be very happy, as I said, we'll watch it very interestingly. As I said, in India, we have to follow a very rigorous process before selecting a partner. So I think this is something which is non-negotiable, which will follow extremely transparent process to arrive at a decision. But as I said, our minds are open, though we'll not go hyper right now, but we are happy about it. Thank you. What the Hyperloop presents is a transformational technology which will enable many countries to leapfrog. And therefore, uh, I think the government of India and we in the National Institution for Transforming India would be very delighted to work in very close partnership with you. And anything that we can do to accelerate the pace and the process of it, we'll be very delighted to take it forward. I wish you all the best. Uh, you're doing a pilot in uh, LA. I'm pretty sure it will be a success uh, because you have a very unique committed team which has already made a su success of Cisco and therefore uh, this uh, passion, this commitment, this dedication with which you are taking it forward, we look forward uh, to your taking this forward uh, with 10x speed of what you've done in LA in India. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen.